If you take one look around me right now, all around this boat, it's nothing but shallow cover. And throughout the entire country, it means big bass. I grew up fishing in Georgia, a lot of muddy water, shallow type fisheries, and there it's hard to beat flipping and pitching soft plastics for big bass. And when you're working down a stretch of bank, you're gonna look for something that looks a little bit different than everything else. We got a bunch of bushes back there. They look sexy, but they're in about four inches of water and not the, uh, not the best depth for catching big bass. So what I like to do is target pieces that come out just a little bit further. So we got six inches back here. The boat is in three and a half feet. And these bushes right here on the outside are in about probably two, two and a half feet. So look for something different. Bass love an edge. That's why I target edges. It gives them something to orient to as they move to and from shallow water. And just pick it apart. I mean, if you think there, if you're not convinced that there's not a fish somewhere you just casted, cast again. And it's about being efficient too though. I mean, you gotta just go through here and just just go to work. Just keep your head down. And just keep fishing. I just put it down there when I'm in super shallow cover. I'll flip it in there and I'll shake it about. I'll lift it about probably two or three times. And if it doesn't bite it by then, it's lost its chance. Now there's some times where that changes, but that's primarily what works best for me. So there's not much better, uh, there's not a better feeling in bass fishing than flipping into heavy cover, feeling that thump, seeing your line swim off and setting the hook into something solid. Now I love jig fishing. I catch a lot of big fish on jigs, but the most consistent technique uh, day in and day out is flipping soft plastic baits. Now, when you walk down the aisle of your favorite tackle store, whatever, whatever it may be, you're gonna see bags and bags and bags and probably more bags of all these soft plastic. This one's gonna say it's the best and so is this one. So it's really hard to choose. But in, in my opinion, you can break it down into four categories. It's gonna make both your purchasing easier and I think you'll catch more fish with it. Now, these four categories I like to use um, both for application and storage. You can store it a little bit more modular, modularly and uh, pick through it easier and find what you need without having to, uh, without having to shuffle through your entire boat. I, I really like to use crawfish type soft plastics in situations where of course you might think there's crawfish around. Now those situations are times like a full moon uh, a couple days before and after a full moon, you're gonna have a lot of crawfish come out of rocks, of deep brush piles around the bank, and the bass eat those. I mean, that's a great source of protein for bass. So, you know, this is, this is like a crawl baits like this, they'll work any day, really. I mean, it's just a good staple. You flip it to, to enough trees and blowdowns, you'll catch fish. And um, I also like to use lizards. Now, people think that the lizard is a springtime only type deal. Now it's at its best in the spring, but you can absolutely whack them on this throughout the entire year. You can flip this thing underneath docks, you can flip it to grass lines, and you can even swim it through heavier vegetation on a light Texas rig. So it's very versatile. It allows you to get to the fish easily. And they, I mean, a bass cannot stand the sight of this thing. So this is always, always a great choice. And here for my heavier cover presentations, like when I'm in very thick grass, when I'm trying to penetrate cover and get down to the bottom where those fish are sitting, I like to use very slender beaver baits, like the Missile Baits D-Bomb. This is what this one is. It doesn't have many appendages. You'll notice it's very smooth. It doesn't have a lot of noise, more or less, to get caught on branches, to get caught on grass strands. So when you're trying to get in really small areas, you can squeeze this little dude in to, to anywhere. And you can get to those fish on high sky days when, they're, when it's really sunny and they're tucked in really tight to cover. And finally, when I'm looking for a big bite and they won't eat that jig, 
I like creature baits. That's what I call these. This happens to be a zoom brush hog. Um, they're very, they're, they're larger. They put off a lot of uh, vibration in the water, a lot of displacement. So when this thing's falling, these ribbon tails are just twirling through the water like that. And when you twitch it, you've got these side paddles making movement, undulating down there. So this is a great big fish bait. And I really like it in the summer months as well. Now, you see guys throwing these big, big old uh, 10 inch worms in the summer. And you think, well, what does that really imitate? I've never seen them never seen an earthworm that long. There's actually, they actually imitate a lot of leeches, a lot, and even smaller snakes. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Now, this big profile can also do that in the summer. So if you've got deeper docks, you know, and deeper I mean six to eight feet off the end, um, leading into a very shallow area, this is a great choice for it. And another good tip for flipping and pitching shallow cover is, to uh, wear polarized glasses of some sort because you'll see some stuff in the water that a lot of guys are going to miss. So, you know, any isolated pieces of wood out from the stuff everybody else hits is a good idea because, you know, the sexier the cover looks, the more people are going to fish it. I mean, you're not the only one that's found it. I can almost guarantee you that. So, you got to kind of think outside the box a little bit. And when you're pitching and flipping soft plastics into shallow cover, a great starting point as far as a reel is a seven one to one gear ratio. It's quick enough to get the fish out of the cover. And if it runs to the boat, you can take up line quickly. You can go up to eight to one. You can even go up to nine to one these days, but seven to one will, get, will keep you covered. And for your rod, I suggest either a seven foot for sh uh, shorter guys or a seven foot six for taller folks, uh, medium heavy to heavy action, whatever allows you to cast best um, and get the fish out of uh, your specific cover on your home fishery. Um, and as far as line selection, you want it heavy. You don't want a lot of stretch in your line either. So that's why I'm going to pick a 16 to 20 pound fluorocarbon line. It's got low stretch. The fish can't see it, so when they bite, you can yank them out of the crud without having to wrestle with them too much. Right, your hook selection is also critical with this technique. Um, I suggest going out and getting you a few packs of three to five volt hooks. Now you can choose between two types. You can choose between extra wide gap, which are commonly referred to as EWG. Um, they're better for bigger creature baits uh, that have a little bit more meat on them. Uh, you'll get better hook penetration sometimes and uh, that's, that's pretty much what I use the EWGs for. Now for the smaller, more compact flipping baits, um, I like to use just a straight shank flipping hook. Um, a lot of companies make some really cool ones. Um, like I said, 3 aught to 4 aught. Now these straight shank flipping hooks are great for um, flipping into small areas because when you set the hook, this dude is pretty mean. He's gonna come straight up and stick right there in the hard part of that fish's mouth and that's where you wanna hook him. Check us out at wiredtubefish.com.